I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. I do want to welcome all of you members of Davy Street Presbyterian Church, as well as many who are from afar for our virtual service this morning, which is the 22nd Sunday in Ordinary Time, August the 30th, 2020. This is the first time that we are back in our sanctuary since March. And as we are here, no matter where we are, we are thankful the Lord has blessed us that we are able to worship the Lord once again. I do have a few announcements for you this morning. First of all, the Men's Council. The Men's Council will have their second Zoom meeting the first Sunday of September, I mean, first Saturday of September, which is next Saturday, September the 3rd. And Leah will send you a Zoom link at nine, for 9 o'clock next Saturday morning the September the 3rd, so please be on the watch for that. Next Sunday, I will be on vacation for the whole month of September. So the Reverend Dr. Bruce Grady, the Associate Pastor at Western Boulevard Presbyterian Church, who has been with us before, will have the service for you for next Sunday, so please keep on the lookout for that. On Tuesday for midday prayer, while I am away, Elders Doris Jackson from Davie Street and Elder Pam Wilson from West Raleigh Presbyterian Church will be leading midday prayer going forth using Zoom. So please, if you want to join us, please do so at 12 noon. And you could also email us here at the church site. So you can get on Zoom. And on Thursday evenings at 7.15 p.m. for our intercessory prayer conference call, the Thomases, Bill and Maggie Thomas, will lead us in that as well. So things are well as far as our programs. If there are any emergencies, pastoral emergencies or church emergencies, please make sure you contact either Leah Harris at the church or Elder Felicia Hardy, who will be taking care of those, those situations as well. So please keep that in mind. Truly the Lord is good and is worthy to be praised. And as we are gathered here this morning, let us worship the Lord in spirit and in truth that we may go forth and tell others about our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us worship God. Our call to worship. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And now let us unite our hearts and minds for the prayer of the day. From the demands and pressures of this week, we come, O Lord, seeking rest and renewal. Hear the cries of our hearts, our prayers, our needs. Heal and restore us. For we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Our opening hymn this morning is To God Be the Glory, number 485 in your hymn book.
and every day we try to live into the ways of God, but each and every day we fail. But God continues to be merciful and gracious unto us. With that in mind, let us all pray the prayer of confession together. Patient Lord, we schedule our lives down to the very second. We crowd in as much activity as we can and then wonder why we are so stressed out and tired. We are afraid to miss out on anything. And when it comes time to be with others, we spend our time worrying about details rather than longing for the visit. Forgive us when we get so caught up in the details and miss the opportunity to sit at your feet, learning, listening, growing in our faith. Help us to place ourselves in your care. Slow us down just a bit so that we can see the wonders you have placed before us and truly enjoy and share the blessings you have given to us. For we ask this in Jesus' name, amen. And now let's take a moment for silent confession, for those sins that only know between ourselves and God. God's graciousness and mercy is always available to you. Be assured that no matter what you have done or what you have left undone, God has heard you and in Christ you are forgiven. I declare you in the name of Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. And now let's take a moment to pass the peace of Christ amongst each other. You may want to pass it with your family members and friends that are in the same house as you. You may want to call somebody up and pass the peace of Christ. Or you may want to remember somebody and maybe call them a little bit later on to remember them and to pray for them and to lift them up that we have been reconciled once again into the body of Christ. Truly the Lord is good and is worthy to be praised. And as we are reconciled into, into the, the body of Christ once again, let us celebrate and pass the peace of Christ amongst each other. And now let us unite our hearts and minds for the prayer of illumination. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you. For you are good and you are always worthy to be praised. And as we are gathered here to worship you, Lord, we ask that your Holy Spirit may illumine our hearts and minds. May you block out all negative influences, Lord, from hearing your word this morning from the Old and New Testaments. And once we have heard it, let us go forth, living out your word within the world for today. Lord, we ask for these and other blessings. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Our Old Testament lesson will be Psalm 46, verses 1 through 11. That is Psalm 46, verses 1 through 11. Listen for the word of God. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, Though the earth should change, though the mountains shake in the heart of the sea, though its waters roar and foam, though the mountains tremble with its tumult, there is a river whose streams may glad the city of God, the holy habitation of the Most High. God is in the midst of the city. It shall not be moved. God will help it when the morning dawns. The nations are in uproar, the kingdoms totter. He utters his voice, the earth melts. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord. See what desolations he has brought on the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and shatters the spear. He burns the shields with fire. Be still and know that I am God. I am exalted among the nations. 
I am exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our New Testament lesson will come from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. This is a story of Jesus visiting Mary and Martha. Listen again for God's word unto you. Now as they went on their way, he entered a certain village where a woman named Martha welcomed him into her home. She had a sister named Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to what he was saying. But Martha was distracted by her many tasks. So she came to him and asked, Lord, do you not care that my sister hath left me to do all the work by myself? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are worried and distracted by many things. There is need of only one thing. Mary has chosen the better part, which will not be taken away from her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. that was read for you just a few minutes ago in the Gospel of Luke, it reads to us in Luke chapter 10, verse 42, there is only need of one thing. I remember, this is, a, this is the first sermon I preached when I first came to Davy Street on March 3rd, 1996. And I thought, 
as it was then, is probably pretty apropos now as we go our separate ways and our separate journeys in life. Many of you can attest to the fact that it's hard to concentrate on just one thing. We really want to just concentrate on one thing, which we call the main thing, but it's hard for us to do so because there are so many other things that are going within our minds. We have full intentions when we wake up in the morning that we're going to focus on this one thing that we said we were going to do for weeks, but as soon as we wake up and do something else, it just throws us all off. We find out that our minds, whether it's because of TV, social media, cell phone, we just can't stay focused on one thing for very long because the world changes and we want to catch everything that comes to our minds and our hearts, that we don't want to miss anything. Some people we could say have ADHD or ADD, just can't pay attention for nothing in the world. But yet, as Davy Street, both corporately and individually, and even for myself, as we go in different directions and follow the different journeys that God has given to us, what are we called to do next in the midst of the anxiety and the confusion and in the non-focus that we have within our lives to seek that God has something different for us? We find here in this story that Jesus was making his way towards Jerusalem. And Jesus had been doing his ministry while he was making his way to Jerusalem for the final time. And as we see here within the text, Jesus had done great things. Jesus had just sent out the 70 disciples. He told them to go out two by two. And no matter where you go, you eat at people's homes. And even if they don't accept you, you shake the dust off your feet and keep on going. And yet the 70 had returned unto Jesus and they had told him all the exciting things they had done and the power that God had given them. And then right before this particular story, we find out about the story of the Good Samaritan. How there was a Samaritan who was left on the road to die. And a Levite had passed him and a priest had passed him. But yet, it was somebody else who had helped him. It was a Samaritan that helped somebody else actually on the road and it made sure that he was taken care of, that he was bandaged and he had a room to stay. And Jesus comes to this place. Jesus comes to the house of Mary and Martha. Now, it does not tell us exactly where it is. We can say that the story is in Bethany or some other town that's close to Jerusalem, but we do know that Mary and Martha had loved Jesus. They had seen that what he had done, and they were excited for the prophet or the one who had called the Messiah to come and to be with them. Now keep in mind that hospitality was a huge deal back in these days. If somebody came to your house or they came to your presence, you were supposed to offer them something to eat and take care of their needs. And that's just how it was back in those days. And you can imagine as Jesus was coming to Martha's house, Martha had a whole meal planned out. Knew exactly what she was going to do when Jesus came. So you can imagine that Martha had started doing all the preparations. She had went to the market earlier to buy what she needed. She already knew what she was going to preset cook Jesus. And, and she knew everything, what everything exactly right. And she was focused on making sure that Jesus was going to be taken care of when Jesus came into her home. However, Martha had a sister named Mary. And customarily, maybe you would have thought, that Mary would have helped her sister prepare the meal. But Mary had a little bit of a dilemma. For Mary had to find out whether she was going to help her sister Martha prepare the meal or whether she was going to leave Jesus, the honored guest, all alone. The text did not tell us if there was anybody else in the house or not, so we were assuming that there's just Mary and Martha by themselves with Jesus. And Mary probably thought it was rude to leave Jesus by himself, maybe talking from the kitchen, leaning over into the, the hole there and say, hey, Jesus, how you doing? That wasn't a correct way to carry on a conversation. And maybe she thought that the guests would have 
felt kind of put out because Noah was paying attention to Jesus. It was very, very important. But yet we find also that Mary had a desire in spite of the conventional thought that she was supposed to help her sister, in spite of trying to make preparations for hospitality, making sure that her guest was okay. Mary wanted to sit at the feet of Jesus and to listen to everything Jesus had that she may learn and that she may be like one of the disciples to learn everything about Jesus as she strengthens her own spiritual life to go forth into the world. So Mary had made the decision that she was going instead of being with Martha helping to prepare the meal for Jesus, she was going to sit at Jesus' feet. And you could also imagine that as Mary had made a decision to do that, she probably didn't tell her sister, number one, but number two, Mary, or Martha probably got a little bit upset. Martha thinking, I'm doing all this work by myself. I'm doing everything to take care of Jesus. And yet my sister is just sitting here talking to him. She's supposed to be in here helping me prepare the meal. So Martha was probably thinking about saying something to Mary, and maybe she did. Mary, you need to come on in here and help me. And Mary just kind of ignored her and said, well, I'm talking to Jesus right now. But it finally got to the point that if Mary was not going to come and answer Martha, maybe as she knew Jesus as well as Mary, she'd ask Jesus to tell her to help come and help me in the kitchen. And that's exactly what she did. For she said, Jesus, tell my sister to come in here and help me. Now you would have thought that's a reasonable request, is it not? And she probably thought in the affirmative that Jesus was going to tell her, tell Mary that is, to go and help your sister in the kitchen. But Jesus has a little bit of a different answer, as Jesus mostly does. For Jesus had told her, Martha, Martha, you are distracted by many tasks. There's only need of one thing. Could you imagine the shock that was on Martha's face? Now this Jesus, I'm sitting there spending my time to get things ready for him. And he's going to tell me, that Mary needs to stay there, number one, or imply Mary needs to stay there, number two, that I'm doing, I'm distracted by many things. You know it's the same thing with us. And let me tell you, there's nothing wrong with serving others and being hospitable to others. And to let you know that one, sin at the feet of Jesus doesn't mean that it's better not to serve because we're called to do both at the same time, to show hospitality and to listen to the one who has come. But there comes a point in time in life that one does take precedent over the other. You see, we get too busy doing what we want to do in life, but we forget about Jesus. We have full intentions every morning to get up and to pray and to talk to Jesus before we leave the house, but we never do because we get distracted by the kids. Or maybe we want something to eat first, or maybe we need to read something or see what the news is on the TV. See, we forget about Jesus. But yet, for us here today, the story is we need to take some time out and just sit and listen to Jesus. You see, Davy Street, as you go from this day forward, there are going to be a lot of things that will distract you. You have to find someone to preach in the pulpit every Sunday. You have to worry about how you're going to continue to do Christian education. You have to worry about how we're going to continue mission in the world. You're going to worry about how much money we're going to be taking in because we still have to pay a mortgage and do the mission of the church. You're going to be looking at people who are coming here to Davy Street to preach, either virtually or in person, no matter how long COVID's going to last, thinking that this is the person for us. You're going to be thinking, oh Lord, what are we going to do? We want to have a pastor just like everybody else. You're going to get nervous. You're going to find out that some of your members may find some other place to go on a Sunday morning. You're going to find out that the money may dry up a little bit. You're going to find out that the mission does not go forth that it has been before. But then what we do, we try to fix it ourselves and keep on trying to serve. But yet, the most important thing here today 
is to understand that as you go through this time, and as I go through this time for myself as well, it is time for us to leave everything else behind. Stop all those things that will distract us and listen to what God has for us. It is time for you not to pay attention to all the noise that is out there. Not to listen to when people are going to ask you, when are you going to have your next pastor? It's not about saying we don't have enough money. It's about listening to what Jesus has for you. You see, Jesus has a plan for this church. And Jesus has a plan for this congregation. Jesus has something even greater than we've done the last 24 years to take you even to a further place for mission and ministry within the world. But you have to sit down and listen to him. Yes, there will be times of nervousness. Yes, there will be times of anxiousness. Yes, there will be times of restlessness. Yes, there will be times in you which you will want a shepherd. Yes, there will be times that you want to have a vibe or ministry. But it doesn't come by you working alone. It comes by listening to what God has for you. It's about as a church coming together, praying and seeking out what God's discernment is for you within your own lives. You see, it's time for all of us to listen to what God has for us. This God who led the Egyptians, I mean, who had led the Israelites out of Egypt, even to those in Revelation, knowing that God was going to come back again. It's time for us to sit down and listen to God. It's time for you to discern where God is leading you next. It's time for you to dream the dreams that God has given you to go forth into the world. See, it's not trying to be caught up what you think is best. It's not time for doing appearances, because you know, you can be busy and doing nothing. It's time for you today to do the better part like Mary and go forth and listen to what God has for you. And there will be a time in which you will be like Martha, but you will be doing the ministry of God once you've heard from God. And that is how it's to work today, beloved. There's a song that we used to sing all the time when I was small or when I was a teenager when we get to campus, Sink Ye First the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Allelu, alleluia. Ask, and it shall be given unto you. Seek, and ye shall find. Knock, and it shall be opened unto you. Davy Street today, the same sermon I gave you 24 years ago, the first Sunday of March, is the same sermon that you are to have today. To slip, sit at the feet of the Lord. And listen to what happens next. The block on all the noise, the block on all the chatter, the block on all the anxiety, not to pay attention to what one person says or the other, but all together to have a moment of discerning where God is leading you next. And if, if you do that, this God will bless you greater than anything that you've ever seen within your lives before. For you will be equipped like Mary and the disciples to go out into the world and know what the Lord has called you to do today. Don't be afraid, don't be fearful, or don't be dismayed. Always know that from 1868 to 2020 and even beyond, all the transitions, all the things that have taken place, the paths you have left, the uh, difficult times you've been through, the joyous times, it is this God who has led you all this way. And if you are able to sit at the feet of God, and to leave those other distractions behind. You will know what is the better part to listen to God's word and to go forth and fulfill God's will in the life of 300 East Davy Street. Blessings to you, beloved. Remember to sit at the feet of God, to be assured that God loves you and God will work with you and God will lead you this day and forevermore. Amen. And now let us confess what we believe by our Apostles' Creed, which is in your bulletin for today. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven 
and is seated at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And now is our time and necessary prayer as we pray for ourselves and others. We ask that you may continue to remember those who are sick and shut in, and especially those who are suffering from COVID-19, that we may continue to pray for themselves and their families. Let us also continue to keep in our prayers our nation, for there are so many things that are going on, so much division and strife, but we pray that the God who is a healer and a reconciler will come into this world and teach us how to be the same. I will continue to pray, and there will be opportunities for you to lift up your prayer concerns either silently or loud as I pray. Let us pray. O oh Lord, truly we thank you, for you are good and you are always worthy to be praised and blessed is your name. And as we gather together in person and virtually at this time, we ask, Lord, that you may hear us as we lift up our joys and concerns and help us, Lord, that we may go forth never doubting but having faith that you will answer our prayers in due time. Lord, we ask that you may hear us now as we lift up to you both silently and aloud those who have lost loved ones. Lord, we ask you may hear us now as we lift up to you, both silent and aloud, those who are sick and shut in. Lord, we ask that you may hear us now as we lift up to you, both silent and aloud, the concerns of our world. And Lord, we ask you to hear us now as we lift up to you, both silent and aloud, the joys and blessings you have bestowed. Truly, Lord, we thank you for the opportunity to lift up all that we have and all that we know in our hearts and minds unto you. We know, Lord, that if nobody else hears us, you do. And we pray, Lord, and wait until you will answer our prayers, that we may go forth telling somebody else about our Son and our Savior, Jesus Christ, what you have done, what you are doing, and what you, what you will do for each and every one of us. And Lord, we ask for these and other blessings. In the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, we toss to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now the time for our offering. I want to thank you for continuing to support the church financially we thank you for the checks you have sent. We also thank you for the online giving that you have used, and we are thankful for that. Remember that the Lord loves a cheerful giver, and whatever you give is not for each and every one of us, but it's for the upbuilding of God's kingdom. May you continue to give liberally, give cheerfully, that we may show through our gifts our gratitude to God and use those to serve God's people.
much, Davy Street. It has been a blessing to be your pastor for the last 24 years. And as this is my final service, as I go on vacation, I want to assure you that I will continue to keep you in my prayers, let you know that God loves you, that God may continue to bless you. And now for our charge of benediction. Go forth into the world. God loves you. And as you go forth, remember that you have been fed by God's word. That you may remember in all the business of life, whether church or personal, may you take the time to be like Mary and sit at the feet of Jesus, that as you go forth, you may hear God clearly and follow God's ways into the world. And now may the Lord continue to bless and keep you. May the Lord's face shine upon you and give you peace and rest this day and forevermore. Amen. Go in peace.